Please welcome Stephanie Pashman, CEO, Allegheny Conference, and Brett Perkins, Comcast Corporation Senior Vice President of External and Government Affairs. The Philadelphia region has challenges that are beyond the scope of any one person or group of people to solve. Strong institutions and collaboration amongst institutions and leaders is a prerequisite for tackling our toughest challenges. One of the nationally recognized civic leadership organizations happens to be located on the other side of the Commonwealth from us in Pittsburgh. I'm so glad to be joined by Stephanie Pashman, who is the CEO of the Allegheny Conference on Community Development. The Allegheny Conference brings together public and private sector leaders to drive an agenda to improve the economic future and quality of life in the 10 county Pittsburgh region. Before joining the conference, Stephanie served as CEO of Partner for Work and its predecessor, the Three Rivers Workforce Investment Board. She also spent many years in the healthcare field in both policy and strategy roles, including in Governor Rendell's administration for nearly seven years at the Pennsylvania Department of Human Services as Director of Policy and a Special Assistant to the Secretary. Stephanie and I agreed beforehand that we would not talk about the Steelers or the Eagles, although Gritty got word that I would be talking to somebody from Pittsburgh and asked to be included in this conversation. So we're going to keep an eye out for our favorite mascot. Now let's get to the conversation. So Stephanie, the Allegheny Conference was founded in the mid 1940s. Uh, can you talk a little bit about um, the impetus for its founding? You know, what did Pittsburgh look like then? And what are the challenges that the original conference was uh, was founded to solve? Sure. So this is a great question, Brett. So we celebrated our 75th anniversary last year, which is a tremendous accomplishment for an organization like this representing business that has stood the test of time. And so post-World War II, and, and as you can think about Pittsburgh at that time, we manufactured most of the supplies and metals for what was going on at that time and manufactured for the world, as we like to say. We were coming out of the World War II and the business leaders, particularly Richard King Mellon, were looking around and saying, other cities are starting to compete with us and we better get serious. And so he called a very famous meeting um, at one of our local hotels, the Omni William Penn, with his, his, as we call them, the captains of industry, who at that point were all white men, CEOs, who were leading us and leading the charge in business. And he said to them, we're going to come together. And when we are here, we are citizens of this place first and CEOs of our company second. And we are gonna start coming together to try and make this place better and focus on improving quality of life and making sure our economy stays strong. And that spirit of being a citizen first and doing what's right for the region and not necessarily what makes sense for your own organization in all cases has actually driven us and kept us um, alive for 75 years, as well as the fact that it's CEO only and that it has to be the number one person in the business coming to that table who can speak on behalf of the organization. And um, I think one of the amazing things in looking at and reading about the history uh, of the Allegheny Conference is um, the ability to evolve over time. And I know, um, I think it was in, in 2000, the conference entered into a joint venture with the uh, Greater uh, Pittsburgh Chamber of Commerce, the Pennsylvania Economy League of Greater Philadelphia and the Pittsburgh Regional Alliance, um, which brought those four organizations together under a common umbrella. That's pretty unique um, to, yeah. to happen. So um, can you talk a little bit about how that partnership um, came together and, and how it works and, um, and um, I guess any lessons learned from that, that process? Sure, so, so with, as your point, as a point, excuse me, you made a really valuable point there, Brett, in saying that the decision-making model had to evolve as, as issues facing us changed and evolved. And so what we saw, as I said at the beginning, it was business only, CEOs of companies. And as the region started to change and, and the landscape evolved in terms of who was coming to the table to make change, for example, the role that our universities started to play in economic development, the role our foundations and our very robust philanthropy started to play in driving change and opportunity in the region. We had to open up our tables to more folks and the key decision-making leaders, not necessarily just business, to be able to have the right table set for folks who are able to move things forward. And so what we saw about 20 years ago is that we are, number one, had too many organizations kind of bumping into each other, but number two, 
that the ability to have tools collective in one organization to be able to be on the front lines of marketing the region for business investment through an economic development organization, while at the same time being able to make policy change at the state, federal, and local level through a chamber of commerce, while we also had a think tank arm to help us analyze the problems and be able to solve them was a really powerful and robust com uh, combination. And so that's how the Allegheny Conference was really birthed in its current model. And so we now have one organization that, as I said, has the tools to market the region and fix the region at the same time. And what's interesting is how many other regions in the country have followed our path over the last several years. St. Louis is the most recent example of an organization who has adopted a similar decision-making model, but many other cities in the country now have combined the resources of advocacy and policy with economic development to make a robust public and private table set to be able to, to move regions forward. I think that's great um, because I, I, I'd like to <laughs> use a phrase that you know, I hear too many people use now, let's double click uh, on, on some of uh, that. Um, so you've got a, an organization of 300 members in your investment uh, council. So um, I think we hear collaboration um, as the, the buzzword, regional collaboration, much easier said than, than done. Uh, and I'm, I'm curious about if you could talk a little bit, how does that happen in practice um, mm -hmm. in, in, a, in a region like um, Allegheny County uh, and, and with the conference? Sure. So I think it's a terrific question, and it's a really interesting um, way that we have come to gain some credibility over time. So number one, I do think the fact that the conference has existed for so long, it's a really known brand in the region. And so while we are funded by 300 entities who are our members, we actually have somehow begun to play a role on behalf of the, the greater, greater region. And so when you just think about the recent pandemic as a terrific example, what we have the opportunity to do because we are funded by these members, because we are private, and because we have the ability to kind of have the right intersection with the public sector and, and have proven that we can solve regional problems, is that we could pivot really quickly. And so within a week of going into lockdown, we defined a whole new set of action steps for the organization and created a very robust approach to how we were going to communicate and educate provide uh, be a conduit for information in real time to our elected officials at the federal, state, and local levels as they were thinking about stimulus dollars and change, to being a frontline pro uh, provider of resources to our community. We delivered 32 webinars in two, in two and a half, three months, as an example. And what's even more interesting is that 55% of the people that engaged with us were not members. And so what we've been able to do is have a very strong communication function, but also we also are very flexible as we're trying to stay on the pulse and what is needed and what the region is seeing as its problems by having frontline survey and research capabilities, while at the same time, we are kind of on the ground in our communities and understanding what's on people's minds. And so the, the, the combination of tools that we've been able to build and the relationships that we've been able to leverage has really helped us be an organization that is recognized as a voice and a resource and, and also a table that is set for folks to come together to talk about opportunity. That's great. Um, so, I mean, one of the things I love about the Allegheny Conference is that you, you don't sit back and wait for political leadership uh, to drive the, the conversation and define a vision for the region. Um, so can you talk just a little bit about um, the accomplishments, right? So I, I think, you know, some of us have heard uh, about the, the brand, but the brand underneath it are real accomplishments for the region. So, you know, what's the hit list of things that you, you talk about um, for accomplishments? Sure. So first of all, we really do value our relationships with elected officials. We have a 10 county footprint. And I, for those of you in Philadelphia who don't know the politics, it's full on, you know, Pittsburgh in the middle, very, very blue, getting bluer. We saw it through this election and nine counties that are red and getting redder all the time. So we have a really interesting, challenging dynamic of, of how we interact with the public sector, but also spend a lot of time trying to cultivate relationships with our local elected officials and particularly our state officials and our federal. So we have those relationships. And so we are all working from the same playbook and what we think the region needs and moving us forward. So that's number one. 
Um, in terms of our hit list, you know, it, it's pretty broad and diverse. So it's everything from 20 years to building a fountain at the point to keeping our sports teams in the region to all the business growth and attraction we've done over time. So rebuilding our economy after this steel decline to a time now when even though we have a, no, a lower population than we had then, we now have a diversified uh, economy that actually has more jobs and in the steel heyday, right? So think about that. Fewer people, more jobs. And that is because of the economic development models we've been able to build that have diversified our economy and be able to have as much blend on advanced manufacturing and the future of our economy and robotics and, and AI and, and autonomous vehicles coming out of our universities as we do in the future of manufacturing and energy and what we would might think of as more kind of traditional uh, industries in our region. Um, second, I, there's um, a, a lot of work that we have actually done in terms of um, policy change in the region. So thinking about workforce reforms, recently a very robust agenda around criminal justice reform to provide workforce opportunity for people. We have delivered pension reform to the region over the last few years. And we also have actually you know, pivoted our workforce system through a series of, of opportunities we created over the last few years through a, a report we call the inflection point that documented the future of the workforce and is set out to make change. And we have seen our universities implementing new programs, the new partnerships have come alive, new funding coming to the region and new jobs that have been able to be created and opportunities because we have provided the leadership around workforce and talent. So I know that's a pretty big laundry list and across the board, but it's just a, a sense of kind of, you know, broad based thinking and opportunity where we're able to bring to bear because of our inclusive model and because of the partnerships we have. So let me talk a little more personal um, and around leadership. I mean, you are the, the first woman to lead uh, this organization in 75 year history. Um, and I mean, you bring a, a obvious, much needed change in perspective. Um, and, and, I, and I think that's um, you know, probably a lot of different ways to, to slice that, but um, how are you um, working to make the, the conference and the region more inclusive in its approach to, to growth? Sure. You know, the tagline that really has been mine since I took this job is that my goal is to create a next generation economy for all. And the idea of that for all, I think, is really top of mind. As you mentioned, I ran the workforce system for seven years here and really had to create it. And so I lived on the ground with people and seen their challenges and understand what it means to be disenfranchised and out of work and uneducated and trying to support your family. And so what is really critical is that we have an agenda that we've built that balances not only economic growth, but with quality of life and economy. And so we have a very, very robust a racial equity plan that we have, um, the whole board has adopted over the last several months that looks at equity, racial equity across all facets of what we think about as our work in the economy. So not just how do we make sure talent is diverse and inclusive, but how we make sure our employment, uh, our, excuse me, our places of employment are anti-racist, that we're thinking about culture change, we're thinking about community change, we're thinking about the ecosystem of how people are included in our in our uh, communities, that they have places to go, that they have places to socialize, that they have places to have their needs met. Number two, that we're thinking broadly about economic development in an inclusive way, that when we build new jobs, the right people are getting into them, that we're creating some pathways of people into those jobs, that companies that come to our region appreciate the culture of Pittsburgh is about inclusion and about all. And also that when we think about all of our um, amenities, that they are sought through the lens of equity. And so how do we make sure our parks are available to everybody? How do we make sure that we are making sure our schools are putting the right policies in place? How do we make sure we are thinking about public transportation when we think about our transportation plans? So every element of the work we're doing is infused with an element of racial equity and inclusion in a really, really intentional way, but in a way that isn't just one committee on racial equity, but it is broad based and cross cutting across all of the work we're doing. So I want to, if you don't mind, talk um, about uh, something that uh, you all went through last year. And I and actually, I had uh, read about this last year, did a little bit of homework uh, on it and got reminded as I was preparing for this. But I know that um, the conference has been focused on mapping out um, something you call Next 75. And as a part of that, you, you held 
regional sessions in Butler, Washington, Westmoreland counties. And then this just struck me. You had a, a 1,000 person summit in downtown Pittsburgh in the summer of, of 2019. Um, I mean, that's a lot of stakeholdering. Uh, so uh, can you talk about the outcomes from the initiative? Maybe talk about the initiative a, a little bit and then also um, include you know, your new triple bottom line. Um, I, sure. I'm just really fascinating. Sure, and and sadly, Brett, we were really proud of that work and thought we were launched on a, on a new trajectory for this place and the pandemic hit, but the vision is still sound. And so what happened was we finished the Amazon process, right? And as you know, we were a finalist as was Philadelphia. We led that bid for the Allegheny Conference. That was kind of my, before I even was in this job, I was leading the Amazon process. And so what we learned through that experience is that Number one, we were lacking cohesion of understanding all the opportunities and amenities and benefits of this place, and that we weren't putting our best foot forward collectively, but also where people were left out of the conversation. And so what we set out to do was say, we need to be able to get back to what Pittsburgh is its best at, which is a collaborative, connected community. And we need to understand what is on people's minds. So when we plan for our long-term future, we are listening to all and we are planning for all. And so we started down a path of number one, recognizing that it had to be 10 county, that we had to have stakeholders from all sectors, that our elected officials and public sector was critical, that our nonprofit sector was critical, that all of our outlying communities, rural was important, the, the urban core was important. And so we started defining a series of engagements. And what was critical about all of this, that it was sound research-based and very well documented. And so I have, a, as I said, kind of an internal think tank led by a PhD researcher who has a team of folks and all of our questions and all of our work was, was aligned with a methodology that helped us to track trends and themes and really be able to know that the questions we were asking was following a logic so we could come to a conclusion where we can make recommendations. And so, we first laid the groundwork with this by having small focus groups that led into, as you said, multi-county uh, collaboration. And in each one of those county sessions, we asked similar questions, we had similar dialogue, and we had an, a methodology behind it to track our results. And during that process, again, using a similar research-based methodology, we set a table where people could actually talk to each other. And what was so profound about this experience is how many relationships were forged, how many connections we made with people who didn't know each other, how much we were able to amplify the elements of the region that people may not be aware of, and how much was uncovered about the, the kind of the, 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 the commonalities across the region, even if people were living in you know, the center of Pittsburgh and let's say the vibrant Bakery Square where our Google and all of our tech companies are, all the way out to Indiana County that still has a lot of coal mines and coal powered power plants, right? So really different dynamics, but really common goals. And then coming out of that, we mapped all of that. We were able to see what people wanted and what we released as you asked was a triple bottom line. And the triple bottom line was saying, we are going to number one, grow our economy by 75,000 jobs. So we got to care about jobs and economy, but at the same time, we're going to care about people. 25% improvement in quality of life that maps to wages and inclusion. And number three, that this place is also going to be thinking about sustainability and climate change. And we're going to be looking at the Paris Accords and follow those guidance as we think about growing our economy. So people, place, jobs, a triple bottom line. That's great. <clears throat> so um, I got a note passed to me a couple of minutes ago. Um, it was a note from Gritty. Um, who said, we're all good. He understands that you have a Philadelphia background, uh, so we're not going to have any issues. He's not going to make an appearance uh, right now. Um, Stephanie, I, I want to I want to thank you for taking the time for, for being with us uh, today. You've obviously shared a bunch of the ideas that we might want to steal, and you're only a short drive away if we actually have to come and steal something uh, from you, um, like a Super Bowl trophy or a Stanley Cup or something like that. Uh, so great being with you. Brett, thank you so much. You can steal anything you want, just not our Super Bowl rings. <laughs> <laughs> A special thank you to our sponsors.